everyone. Welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve. I am a drone pilot and this is an electric bike. This is one of the most awesome electric bikes money can buy. Now I've had this bike for over a month and this review almost was never made because of many things. One is we had death in my family. The second thing is while I was unpacking this bike there was a lot of zip ties on it. I had a knife in my hand and I stuck it in my leg by accident trying to cut a zip tie. You can see a picture here. Lots of blood because I nicked an artery so there was blood everywhere and uh, my leg is still not fully healed. I still don't have full rotation of pushing on pedals because I am a cyclist and that's a bit of a problem. So this electric bike has come in really handy because I don't have to pedal a lot. It's electric. So anyways uh, let me jump back to the beginning of my review and start from the start. Here we go. And today I have an electric bike that is a premium one. In other words it's not your average little bike that anybody on your street will have. This is a bike that uh, only the rich on your street will have. So this is by the company Engwe, E-N-G-W-E. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this model is the X26. What's so great about the X26 and why is it premium? Well, it's all made out of aluminum. It has two batteries. It will get you a range of 100 kilometers on a full charge of both batteries. It's got a top speed of over 50 kilometers an hour, which is like 31 miles per hour. So it's really fast. It's got three types of suspension on it and it has little cool features like a really nice display and lights that come on when it gets dark. You don't have to put them on. They're all automatic. So if you've never watched my electric bike reviews on this channel, you're in for a treat because what I do is I unbox this and I speed up the camera so you don't have to watch me unbox it for hours. And then I'll tell you how well it was packaged because they have to ship this huge box to you. Then I'll assemble it and each part I have to assemble I then will tell you how the assembly went and how easy it is. Then after fully assembled I'm going to charge up the batteries. In this case I have to charge up two batteries. I'll show you that. And then I'm going to take it for a ride. And when I take it for a ride I'm just going to give you my honest opinion of what I feel at that moment taking it for a ride. Riding this like a normal bike and then riding it like an electric bike with assistance, throttle control, all that other cool stuff. And then after all that if you enjoy it I'm going to give you a detailed overview of all the components of the bike, really good close-ups and tell you how everything works and if I noticed anything on my rides, any issues with them. So you will see all that so you have the most complex detailed review on the internet and I will try to do it really fast. So here we go with the unboxing. And as I unbox this today let me just tell you that the temperature is 34 degrees Celsius right now but that is in Fahrenheit over here and we have humidity so it feels like 42 degrees Celsius. It's really hot. So if you see me sweating through my t-shirt, that's why. Now I've sped up this portion of the unboxing of the X26, but I must tell you that the X26 is packaged really well. You won't get any damage. Everything is really secure. Just be careful cutting those zip ties. Now after you remove all the zip ties, you are left with this. Now the first item to install are the handlebars. Tools are provided and it's very simple. You're basically just loosening bolts and tightening bolts. Everything fits into place nicely. And when your handlebars are installed, it looks like this. To install the front wheel, first you must remove this bolt. Tools are provided. Just loosen each nut and pull the bolt off. As well, loosen and remove the two nuts off the front wheel, then slide the front wheel into the frame. It only fits one way because you have a disc brake on one side. Then put those nuts back on and tighten them in place. Now the X26 does not look like any other electric bike and therefore you're going to get people who just stop by and want to check it out. Here we have an Amazon delivery guy and his partner comes out to check it out as well. The next item to install is the front headlight. It simply bolts in above the front wheel. When installed it looks like this. Included in the shipping box are the pedals. Now the good thing about the pedals is they're made out of metal and they're also marked left and right. Simply screw them on by hand then tighten them with the included wrench. The next item to install is the main seat. Now the great thing about the seat is that there are springs underneath and it is very cushiony. The seat is held in place by means of a clamp. You tighten a bolt and it pulls the clamp together holding the seat firmly in place. The last item to install is the cushion back seat. Just loosen all the bolts, place it on top of the bike and slide it in place. Now is a good time to charge up the two batteries. First off, you can charge up the main battery by leaving it in the bike. Just plug the battery charger underneath the seat. The charger will glow red and then turn green when the battery is fully charged. To charge up the secondary battery, first you must unlock the bike, then fold the bike into two, insert the keys into the battery, unlock the battery, pull it out, 
and you can see here the location of where you'll plug in the battery charger. Finally, the bike's fat tires will require air. They can handle a maximum of 20 PSI, so I filled mine up to 17.5 PSI. So the next thing we're gonna do is take this bike out for a ride and I'm gonna give you my personal impression of driving this bike without pedal assist, no electricity, just driving it like a bike and then with pedal assist and then with throttle control because there's three modes on here. You have pedal assist mode, you have normal mode and you have sport mode. We'll go check them out now. Now for this journey, I do have two cameras with me. So I have an Insta360 Go on my chest right here to capture everything looking this way. And over on the handlebars, I have an Insta360 X3 camera right here. It's a 360 degree camera. So this will capture my face as well as everything to the front of the bike. And if I can, I'll bring the Skydio 2 drone so that it will chase me and give you some shots from the air. And we're all set to go. And I'm in pedal assist mode and zero. That's what I want. All right, here we go for our journey. I'm in pedal assist zero, which means there's no electrical help helping me pedal this along. And I will tell you right now that if you're not in good shape, pedal assist zero. Yeah, this bike weighs a lot. So if you uh, run out of electrical power, you better be in good shape to pedal this home. Okay, I'm gonna hit plus. I'm in pedal assist one. That's very little help. I'm in gear number one, pedal assist two. So I'm in gear one, pedal assist two. Again, very little help. Pedal assist three, there we go. Okay, now we're moving. Look at my legs go. I'll pick up the gears. I'm in gear number two. So what are two things that I notice missing from this bike already? The first thing would be mirrors. None of these electric bikes come with mirrors. Very few anyways. So you're gonna have to buy mirrors. The second thing is there is no spot for a water bottle on here. There's no water bottle included and no mount for a water bottle. So you will have to get a special mount for this one. And there's also no signal lights. Some electric bikes I've driven have signal lights on them. This one's got no signal lights. So it's hand signals all the way, baby. Brakes on it, excellent. All right. I've still got it in pedal assist three and on gear number two. And it seems to be perfect for this sort of area. Going through a construction site. You do have the suspension up front, the suspension under the seat, the suspension in the seat and the suspension in the back. So yeah, you get a lot of shock absorbing power on this bike. I do find when you hit a bump, the battery that's in the forward section does rattle. So I'm in pedal assist three and speed two. I'm gonna increase the speed to gear number three. So pedal assist three, gear three is good. Let's go to gear four. There we are. The gear shifting is very smooth on this. So right now I'm doing more pedaling than the pedal assist is doing to push me. So it's on pedal assist three and I'm on gear four. However, if I put it up to pedal assist four, there we are. So now it's even down. Now I'm doing very little pedaling. There we go. And when you stop pedaling and pedal assist, uh, the bike just coasts. If I haven't already mentioned it, the horn on this bike is pretty good because it sounds so annoying. There's no way you can not notice it. Listen, <laughs> it's a, it's a, people will wave at you when you hit that horn. So it says I'm doing 33, 35 kilometers an hour right now. So pedal assist, if it doesn't make any sense to you, is like this. Pedal assist is the electric hub in the back pushing you. So it's like when you were a kid and you're pedaling your bike and your friend stood behind you and then pushed your bike so you had to pedal less to go equally as fast. It's, it's that simple. And of course your gears that are on my right, where I say I have in gear one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight, those are like your normal speed bike when you go in gears. And I will say, since it has eight gears on it, they are all situated close to each other. So when you go from one gear to the next to the next, it's not a violent change in uh, speed. It's like a nice, moderate, incremental gear change. All right, the next thing to show you is I'm gonna switch it from pedal assist into normal throttle. So there'll be no more pedal assist. So I hold down the I button. It's in normal now. So I can pedal all I want and nothing is helping me along. However, on my thumb here, over on the left, if I push that down, hoo -hoo, it's like a motorcycle. I have acceleration and I can control how little or how much and I can assist it myself by pedaling. So it says I'm in normal speed number three. So this is full blast on three. I don't have to pedal. It will just take me along at the speed. And of course I could pick any level from zero to this speed 
uh, in acceleration. So if I release the throttle on the left, I go slower. And if I push it down, I go faster. It's that simple. Right now it says I am doing 24 kilometers per hour in uh, normal speed number three. So this is a good time since we're not going super fast and the wind's not blowing on my microphone to explain the difference between uh, normal mode and sport mode. Sport's the next mode. So the only difference is in normal mode, you save a lot of battery power. So you're gonna get a long distance, but if you put it in sport mode, you're gonna use the max wattage that your electric hub can push out. So you're gonna get a lot less distance, but a lot more power. So when you're off-road, you put it in sport mode, you know, if you're going up and down bumpy hills and stuff like that. Or even if you're normally in a city and you have a big hill in front of you, you put it in sport mode. And uh, yeah, then you go really well. But for the most part, when you're on normal terrain, pavement, stuff like that, you're pretty much in uh, normal mode. My leg is really enjoying the fact I don't have to pedal. This is really good. <laughs> All right, I'll see if I can put the Skydio out and have it chase me around as I drive on and off-road. Going up. There we go, it's got me. It's gonna chase me and it should be recording. Auto record, yes. Okay, I'm gonna have it follow me from the right. So as you can see, it's a pretty sexy looking electric bike. I always get compliments when people see this bike. It's pretty decent looking. It's a nice bike to drive too, very smooth. I'm not doing any pedaling. And I'm gonna try the brakes now. There we go. Stops quite well. As soon as these cars go away, I'm driving straight across the road. Here we go, and I'm not using, it's in normal mode, I'm not in sport mode. Here we are, go straight across. Just see what it's like off-road. Well, so far, it doesn't seem like I have to give it much acceleration, it's pretty decent. So I'm not in sport mode. Where are you, where are you, Skydio? I'm not in sport mode right now. I'm in normal mode, but I will switch to sport mode in a second. Okay, to switch to sport mode, I hold down the I button. And it says sport and we're at number five. I'm gonna reduce that to four. Just means I got full wattage for off-road. Here we go. This Skydio is gonna go around to the other side. There we go. I got full power now, but I'm only in speed four. No pedaling. So you boogie, baby. <laughs> you can feel the acceleration in sport mode. I've got the brakes on now because there's water up the front. And uh, I don't want to get my legs all wet because I have, you know, a cut in my leg. So off-road in sport mode, you could have a blast in this thing. Oh, there's a lady and a dog. I'm gonna have to go on the grass to get around her. So here we go. Oh, this grass is soaking wet. There's water. That's another thing missing on the here. There's no front fender. All the water is squirting up in my face. Oh, I still got water. My glasses are full of water. Come around this way. <laughs> I'm coming at you, Skydio. All right, okay, I'm on full speed now. It says I'm going 37, 38, 38, 39 kilometers per hour, 40 kilometers an hour. And I gotta slow down a little bit. So I'm gonna reduce my speed now. I'm putting on sport mode three instead of sport mode five. That was on sport mode five. And I'm coming down this way. That's a different looking bike, eh? Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so I'll tell you about the bike really quick. Yes. You are gonna be amazed at this. Are you ready? I'm ready to be amazed. There's a battery in here. Yes. There's a battery in here. Yes. So this battery and this battery combined will get me 100 kilometers of wow. distance. Yeah, that is nice. a lot. Top speed on this is about 31 miles per hour. It has three modes. I feel like a salesman. Yeah, it's, it's, got, exactly. it's got pedal assist that you're used to with normal electric bikes where you pedal and it's like somebody pushing you from the back. Yeah. Then it's got normal mode where it has a throttle. See, it's gonna wanna go right here. Yeah. You control the throttle, you can pedal if you wish in any of the eight speeds that it comes with. And it's got sport mode, which has max, <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> I'm trying to do my car salesman. And it's got sport mode, which has max wattage in the rear hub. I was in sport mode there and I was going over 40 kilometers an hour on the gravel with the drone following me. Not pedaling at all, just pushing this. You can go up and down hills uh, in sport mode. It's really good. It's made for off-road. So it is a very cushy ride I found on my journey here. Uh, the shocks in the front, they don't have a lot of travel, but they have enough travel. The shock in the center, again, not a lot of travel, but enough. The ones in the back, these are air shocks. You can adjust them with air. They don't have a lot of travel. So you go, well, where's all the shocking stuff? Under your seat, you also have springs. When you put all those little bits together, 
you, you pretty much have some nice it's a Cadillac. yeah it's like a cadillac ride it's very nice but i wouldn't go off-roading like use like a mountain bike or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just gonna wreck your spine or something because it is it's really heavy if you want to take it for a spin uh Ooh. go ahead just push this a little bit okay and so you'll go all right uh, get, get off there. yeah get off this sure, try not to wipe out all at once <laughs> okay just push it a little bit there you go the more you push the faster you go Is it the Cadillac of bikes? Oh, it sure rides nice. Yeah. Yeah, hop do on. It, Jack, do it. Just don't hit the throttle when you get on. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to take a swing. Here, I'll, I'll hold the handlebar. <laughs> Holy shit, no. No, I definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely going to have a high pitch. Right All right, that was some fun riding. I'm going to head back home now. Uh, the great thing is, on an electric bike, I don't feel like pedaling because my right leg, due to the injury, is very sore. So I'm just going to cruise back in. Uh, I've got it in sport mode. I'll switch it to uh, normal mode, which is also called echo mode. And then uh, just use the throttle control to drive home. Here we have the percentage of battery power remaining. It says 79%. I started out with about 93% for that ride. And down here, it shows me I was gone for 48 minutes. It says my max speed was 42 kilometers per hour. Average speed was 20 kilometers per hour. And trip distance was 16.3 kilometers. Okay, a few things I noticed after that ride. Uh, first off, it is very smooth, very comfortable. There is no worry about taking bumps. It feels very comfortable all the way. It's like a Cadillac version of a bike. The suspension seems to work, even though there's not a lot of travel, it does well. Second thing I noticed, plenty of power in pedal assist and plenty of power when you're in sport mode or normal mode. I never had to worry about not having enough power. That was crossing roads, going on straightaways, going up slight inclines, it all worked well especially off-road really good one negative i noticed was that my seat height here i kept adjusting it let me just pull this out so if you pull this up i like it up to about here when i ride but even though you lock it in place after a while while i was riding it kept on lowering so a lot of times when you see me riding it looks like the seat's too low that's what was happening i couldn't figure it out um, i'm gonna have to put something in there to cause some more friction so when you put the lock mechanism in place it actually stays locked because as you take little bumps it actually goes down so that's something i will have to fix and speaking of the seat height as i've mentioned and other people have mentioned the ride height is pretty high if you're a short person you can't ride this bike you have to be about my height i'm like five nine so five nine is a good height for this or taller but as soon as you get less than that and you have short legs or you're old and you can't lift your legs very high to get over this bar then uh, this bike is too big for you And another thing that was brought to my attention on that ride is there is no front fender, which I knew there was no front fender, but I kind of miss it because when I was going over mud or over water puddles, it just sprays up in your face, all over my glasses, everything. If I had a business suit on, it would be pretty much uh, destroyed for going around puddles. So a fender would be nice as well as some little mechanism to hold a water bottle because if you look you're not going to stick it down there you're not going to stick it here you might have to put it on the back you can put it here but it's going to sit upwards instead of under because under is all your cables and wires also no mirror that's normal for electric bikes they always make you buy your own mirror but overall it's uh, pretty decent other than those little minor things and now let me show you what makes this bike so great 
First off, you get 4 inch fat tires on 26 inch rims. Out of the box, you will need to inflate the tires to 20 psi or less. Hydraulic disc brakes are located on the front and rear of the bike. The front forks contain springs within them for shock absorption, but unfortunately there are no preload or dampening settings for these shocks. The headlight automatically turns on when it gets dark out or you can turn it on manually. The handlebars are very comfortable for riding. Let's take a look at the right handle. First off you have an 8-speed Shimano gear shifter. You move through the gears forwards and backwards by pressing these two buttons. The hydraulic brake lever is nicely situated. The left handlebar also has a hydraulic brake lever. In addition, on the left side, this is where you'll find the electronic throttle control. Below the throttle control, you'll find the horn. If you wish to fold the bike for storage, transportation, or to remove the front battery, this is how you do it. After you've unlocked the center lever, fold the bike in half. The bike is very heavy, so it takes a bit of strength to get it to fold. The pedals are nicely constructed of metal. As well, much of the entire gear mechanism is all metal. In the center of the bike, you'll find another shock absorbing system to ensure a very smooth ride. To access power from the front battery, you must remove this tab. Next, disconnect the cable from the rear battery and plug it into the forward battery. To adjust the seat height or remove the rear battery, simply pull this lever, pull up on the seat. The rear battery has an on off switch, which is located below the seat. Simply press this button. The seat is very cushy to absorb shocks and not only that, underneath the seat you'll see there's a set of springs to absorb additional shocks. The bike does come with a rear kickstand. Another set of shocks are located in the rear of the bike and these are air shocks. This is normally the cargo area on an electric bike, however this area is extremely cushy so perhaps it was intended to be an extra seat to bring a passenger along. At the very rear of the bike there is a brake light. There is also an additional light under the seat. The hub electric motor puts out 1200 watts of peak power. Here you can see a close up of the Shimano 8 speed system. A nice high quality silver colored chain is included. To power on the bike, press this power button. The main display will then come to life and reveal basic information. At the top of the screen you'll be shown the remaining battery percentage for whichever battery you are currently using. Below this you'll find your moving forward speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, however you have set that up. This white diagonal bar will change as you use more watts of power. On the bottom left you'll see what mode you're in, normal, sport or pedal assist. It will also show you the level of electrical assistance from 1 to 5. And the bottom right is your information display that you'll look at during your trip and after your trip. If you press the plus and minus buttons at the same time, you can then go into your menu and configure your bike to your preferences. So overall you can see the X26 offers quite a lot for the price. Now let me give you my final thoughts. Alright, so that concludes my review of the Enjoy X26. This is a beautiful bike. Now I've driven it now for two, three months. I've had it for quite some time. My youngest son is in love with this bike and uh, he wants it, so I'm going to give it to him. So if you see this in the future, it's me borrowing his bike. Now, if you didn't get from the video what I found to be minor issues with this bike, well, here's, here's a list of them here. These are the minor issues I found with this bike. Very minor, nothing major. It's a really, really good bike. Now, if you want to know what the major positives are, well, here, let me go this way. These are the major positives about this bike. This is why you should buy this bike. It's really good. So you've got all these great uh, options here, these great reasons to get it. So with all that said, I'm going to put links to this bike below. Go check it out. Like I said, I've had this for about three months now. Haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Everything works. It's, it's a joy to ride. Very comfortable. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, this review of the Enjoy X26, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions on this bike, just post them below and I'll get back to you. But for now, I say thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.